maths is also quite interesting. So I started doing some research on this topic, and I actually found a lot of um, maths research based on this. Um, and he's my favorite one from this guy called Peter Backus, uh, who's a university professor at Warwick University. Um, and he wrote this paper um, called Why I Don't Have a Girlfriend. Um, so at least he's being honest. Um, to be fair, mathematicians aren't very renowned for being good with love. Um, yeah, if you actually understand this, um, that's pretty sad. That's good. Um, right, so let's actually see what this paper has to say. Um, so Peter isn't a very demanding or greedy man. All he's looking for in the whole of the female population of the UK um, is someone who has a university degree, um, someone who is in the right age range, um, someone who is likely to live close to him, someone he's likely to get on well with, someone who's likely to be attractive, and someone who's likely to find him attractive. Um, <laughs> and so he comes up with an estimate of a total of 26 women in the whole of the UK. Um, who could be his perfect match. Um, now that's not a lot, and I personally don't subscribe to such a pessimistic view of love. I think human emotions are much more complex than that. Um, but that, that's oh. Oh. Um, But I also think that love, just like life in general, is full of patterns, and that's what, what maths is all about. Um, so I thought, yeah, let's talk about maths and love. Um, so I'm going to give you, basically, the objective I set, uh, I set, I set myself for this talk is to kind of give all of you um, optimize all of your chances to find your perfect match in life, right? So I'm going to give you my three, my, okay, it's supposed to be three, but my three mathematically <laughs> 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 right. my, my verified optics for love. Right, um, so let's move in. Um, I want you all to stare at these equations, right? To be fair, this should be your first orgasm right there. <laughs> 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 okay, so these equations, they aren't just a random accumulation of symbols, they actually mean something. They actually manage, and this is quite amazing I think, to predict with 95% uh, accuracy whether a couple will remain together within the next six years. Um, I think that's quite a crazy result. Um, and this has actually been um, the result of a huge study made by sociologists and psychologists who came together and took hundreds of couples and put them together in a room and made them talk about kind of controversial topics like um, their children, money, their house, their car. And they observed everything you can think of, from their heartbeat to their body language. Um, and so here's what they actually mean. Um, so the, how the dynamics of a couple work is that it's basically uh, based on the wife's mood when alone, wife's mood with husband, and husband's influence on wife and vice versa. Now the most important term in this equation is this last one, which kind of shows how much influence each partner has on one another. Now you can think of this as basically how annoying the husband can be to his wife until she gets really pissed. <laughs> um, and this is called the negativity threshold. And basically, and this is my first tip, um, if you want a relationship to be stable and to last longer, um, it, it's actually the couples who respond the least to each other who last longer. Yeah, it's surprising, but... Um, so basically my first step is going to be have high expectations. Because when you've got these high expectations, you kind of continuously repair um, all the flaws in your relationship. Um, now, it's quite interesting to note at this point that these equations, these exact equations, have been shown to be perfectly capable um, of modeling what happens between two countries um, in an arms race. Um, so, mathematically speaking, um, uh, an arguing couple is the same thing um, as the beginning of the nuclear war. Um, <laughs> all right, um, so let's move on to our next point. Um, so I'm going to make a bold statement here, and you might not all agree, but I think that love sucks. Um, all right, wait, wait. Um, <laughs> Right, so in the beginning, even in the beginning, you're happy and you're excited and, and you're in love, it's all fine. But after a while, you get scared, you don't really know what to do. Um, and you've got this kind of cycle going on. And it's the same thing with couples. It goes through some kind of cycle where the mood changes over time. And this um, Italian research paper um, actually looks at which 
um, character traits um, best put together in order to create a stable relationship. And so they are identified as thing called synergism. Um, now, I'm sure you all have someone um, in your friend group who, who is in a relationship and who thinks that their partner is this kind of um, half god without any flaws, super intelligent, super nice, etc. Now, this paper actually proves that if you think that, you are not likely to last long in a relationship. This is my second tip. When you're in, later in a relationship, don't overestimate your partner. Right? All right, um, so that was my second tip. Well, let's move on now to the next bit. Um, back to the basic physiological level of love. Right? So love isn't just an emotional state. It's also when your body starts producing more and more hormones, like oxytocin, which is the love hormone, and testosterone. Now, I'm talking to all the um, guys in this room, all right? So raise your hand uh, if you think that when it comes to love, um, we will never understand what girls think. The girls are just complicated, and there's no way we're ever going to understand what they think. Hiya, hiya. All right, that, that, that's quite a lot. That's quite a lot. Let's, let's have a look at what the equations actually say about this. Right, so... <laughs> That's pretty complicated. Um, this equation actually models how hormones are produced within um, a girl's body. Now, I'm talking to all the girls in this room. Raise your hand if you think that when it comes to love, guys are stupid and dumb and don't understand anything. In general. All right, all right, that's fine. Let's have a look then at what the equations actually say about this. <laughs> um, yeah, boys are quite complicated actually, and these equations actually model how hormones are produced within a uh, guy's body, but also how there's this kind of continuous conversation between the guy's brain and his lower body parts. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Uh, right, so let's move on to our last point and the last tip. Um, and this might not apply to a lot of the students in this room, but it might apply to some of the teachers in the room. Um, now this basic question, when should you decide that you have finally met your perfect partner? And when should you decide to finally marry someone? Right? And we can actually use some maths to solve this problem. And there's actually this thing called um, the optimal stopping problem. Right? So let's imagine this game. Um, you start dating when you're 15, and you want to be married um, by the time you're 40. Now, um, the rules of the game are that once you decide to marry someone, you can't look into the future and see whether there's someone better that uh, you could possibly meet. And likewise, you can't look into the past and marry someone you, you met in the past. Now, it turns out that what you should do in order to optimize your chances of finding a perfect match is you simply have to reject everyone in the first 37% of your life. <laughs> Just reject everyone. Um, and then, once this kind of rejection phase, you, you can kind of understand this rejection phase as kind of getting a like, feel for the marketplace, if that makes sense. <laughs> right. Okay, once, once this rejection phase has gone past, you marry the next person that comes to you and who is better than everyone you've met before. And this has been proven to optimize the chance of finding a perfect partner. Now, there are some problems with this kind of strategy because let's imagine you meet only amazing people in your rejection phase. Now I'm afraid you have to reject them because you're following the strategy. <laughs> but if you meet only boring people, incredibly boring people after that, then I'm afraid you can't marry anyone and you'll have to die alone. <laughs> and likewise, if you only meet incredibly boring people in your rejection phase, that's, that's only fine because you can reject them. Um, but then after that, you meet someone who's slightly less boring, but still incredibly boring, <laughs> then you still have to marry them, and you live a boring life. Um, now, I actually made a postcard, there's Valentine's Day is actually coming pretty close now, and I made a postcard for a kind of mathematician's point of view on love, uh, on love and marriage, um, which is this, my darling husband, you're marginally less terrible than the first 37% of people I met. <laughs> um, Right, so <laughs> right, so those were my three um, mathematically verifiable tips for love. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Um, I want to say though that I would like all of you to find some useful maths in love if one day you get the chance. 
But I would like all of you also to show some more love for Mouse. Thank you. <laughs>